Okay, so um, I don't want to hear my own voice. <laughs> testing, testing. Siapa kat sini ada tutup phone? Okay, dengar tak ni? Okay. Alright, so bismillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good afternoon. Ah, there's a lot of stairs. Um, so since I met you guys this morning as well, so I'm going to skip a lot of things. Um, so that's my partner for today, uh, for Thursday's class. Okay, you will see Dr. Ziana. Um, forgive me that I'm gonna sit because I'm so tired. I just need to catch up my breath. <coughs> okay, so um, a little bit of course introduction. What you will learn for the next 14 weeks. So my class will, all, will be, as I mentioned in the WhatsApp group, um, will be on Tuesday 2 to 3. Um, until week seven, on week eight, then I will switch with Dr. Ziana. Okay, so as I mentioned in the, in the WhatsApp group. So what you will learn from my section is pretty much you will learn about um, proteins, amino acid, peptides, uh, with regards to its structure, how we actually synthesize them, and how you can actually analyze them using degradation approach. Okay, so meaning that if say, for example, if you have a protein, um, so this morning we talk about discovery, right? So discovery of unknown um, natural products, for example. So if, say, for example, you found an unknown protein from um, from the nature. So how do you actually know what is the structure? So other than doing uh, mass spectrometry, doing using NMR spectroscopy, we can actually do a chemical approach whereby we can cut the um, proteins into a smaller fraction and then you can actually analyze the smaller fraction to um, clearly identify what is the sequence of the protein. Okay, so this is what we're we going to learn. And then in terms of, oh sorry, it's not nuclear acid anymore, um, I forgot to change. So the other section is we learn about lipids. Um, so in terms of lipid, what are the general structure of lipids? The um, structure and then we are not going to look at how we actually synthesize lipids okay um, because lipids has so many different types of structure so i'm not going to go in very detail um, just enough that what are lipids what are they used for and how do you actually characterize them okay so if you have if you have looked at the um, lecture notes for i think i number it six and seven so um, those are the things that we're going to touch, okay? All right, so by the end of this course, we're going to look at lipids, proteins, and amino acids. Um, again, over here, lipids and its industrial uh, processes on how we actually adapt or, or use lipids in our daily life. Okay, um, forensic is not, it will be under nucleic acid, so lipids is just for industrial. Um, and also, we're going to look at uh, peptide synthesis, different types of peptide synthesis, and uh, sequence analysis, as I mentioned. Okay, um, lecture time slot. We do have a mid semester break this time around uh, as compared to 2004. And you will have one who is at the very end, which I think I might change depending on the situation. Okay, because similar to 2004, uh, 2006, this one is 2004. Uh, similar to 2006, you will have a group assignment. Um, so I might cancel out the quiz depending on the scenario because this one is in week four, uh, 13. So you might have a lot more assignments that you need to complete. So I'm just going to give that one up. Okay. Or else I might actually um, push it even earlier, maybe week six or week seven, and then just cover um, the whatever you have covered. Okay. In terms of final exam, um, I just noticed that Dr. Aziana also planned to do a final exam. So towards the end of the day, I might combine uh, with Dr. Aziana for the final exam. Okay, so instead of having two final exams for this course, we're going to have one only. Okay, so this one, that's why I put it there, TBA. Um, I just knew about this, so I'm going to discuss a bit further with Dr. Aziana. Okay, that one is just lecture plan. Uh, nothing much. Pull everywhere. I've already mentioned to you guys this morning. So I'm going to skip that one as well. Attendance, again, should be also um, listed on Spectrum. So make sure you go and scan, um, have a record. 
And before we move on, we're going to do um, just pull up your devices. Open poll F. I have three questions I want to ask you guys. Okay, question number one. Uh, sorry, eh? Yeah, kena buka kat sini. Um, which of these? Okay, so this is question number one. Which of these is a functional group? Functional group for an amine. NH2, NH3, RCOH, ROH, all of these. Just a quick one since we already lost a lot of time. Any other options? No? I'll give you guys 10 more seconds. If anyone thinks they want to change. I have 24 responses. Probably more. Okay. All right. So done with that. So everybody's correct. R and H2. Next one. A carbonyl can react with an amine to form an amide spontaneously. True or false? or false. Uh, okay, any other options? So we have 80% says true, 20% says false. No else? Nak tambah? Tak ada? How many responses do I have? Uh, okay. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, the correct answer is false. Okay, so um, carboxylic acid and amine does not spontaneously react. So you, you need to have a catalyst. Remember if you, uh, if you go back when you are learning about acid and base, so you can form an amide but you need to have catalyst. So normally, as long as you have a, a proton, a little bit of proton, then um, you can actually catalyze the formation of amide. So it does not spontaneously. It, it does, but it will take, I don't know, probably a few days instead of um, it, with catalyst, you can form it very, very quickly. Within five minutes, you can have, uh, you can form an amide. But without a catalyst, that will take days. Or um, even after days, it, it might be like one or two percent only. Okay. Because towards the end of the day, we will look at why um, in the next few um, slides. Okay, third question. Which of these is an amino acid? Which of these is an amino acid? You should be able to see the image and then click on which one is the amino acid. Okay. So any more changes? No. Yang the other two berdua berdua dua tu tak tukar ke? Wah. Saju ya. Yeah. Okay. Then so the last person who who chooses um who who chosen Nucleotide, do you want to change or not? Never mind. Okay, so everybody or 99% of you got it right. So it's on the top left um, corner. Okay, so amino acid, you need to have, um, since it's an acid, so you need to have an acid functional group. And because it is an, also an amino, so you need to have an amine group. So you just combine them together, then you get an amino acid. Okay, we will look at these in the next few slides. Okay, my slide doesn't want to move. Doesn't want to move. Okay. All right. So, um, assignment. Oh, I guess second. 
see again i give you guys a chance to actually start from the first week of the semester so this time around there's only like two per group um well at least based on my name list there should be one group only that has three members um the rest you will only have two okay but this one is even easier um the first one you need to design so to number or six you need to design your own molecules and then um write about it this time around it's even easier you can actually start today and then finish up today if you want um so you need to so there's two options there's two titles so the first one is um, either you choose number one or you choose number two okay um pretty much that is the question uh, and you can just write about pretty much anything under the sun provided that you are focusing on the question which is um for number one we need to talk about biosynthesis and synthesis pathway we have not covered about that but if you want to write it faster or, or um, you, you want to start today be my guest you can you can do your own investigation and then write it on your own or in a group or number two you need to discuss on how would you be able to identify and verify a sequence of, of protein so this time around it's looking at on um, how do you actually um, process an unknown and then derive the structure okay so the lecture notes are all there if you want to start early you can just browse through the lecture notes and then find your own extra information online um, otherwise we, i will go back and touch about this as we progress okay um again some rules turn it in submission via spectrum very short three pages only okay very very short you may include figure if you want uh, and it will not be counted to the page length um, and three sections intro body conclusion and reference list as usual and in, in text citation okay um wait this one is i think in week seven as well right so that after in week eight and forward you will not have any more assignments from me at least okay we have about 20 minutes let's go quickly so central dogma for molecular biology why are we learning biology because we are learning about natural um, structures so we need to know a little bit about what is the central dogma of molecular biology so i hope you guys know that francis and watson creek francis, james watson and francis creek um managed to solve the structure of dna so they are not the person who identify dna but they solve the structure of um dna and that's when we know that dna is uh, in in a double helix formation okay so what is this central dogma all about central dogma basically talks about um initially you have your genetic materials in terms of uh, dna and then you um transcribe so transcript over there from a dna into an mrna or rna and then from this rna you translate that um in the ribosome to become a protein okay so these are all how pretty much how our biology um works in each of every out in each of our cells um this system actually follows okay but again it's a central dogma um and this central dogma is no longer complete so to say because there are a lot of um uh, new knowledge discoveries by which um, rna now can become dna and stuff like that okay so like for example for hiv um instead of you know translating in one way from rna to a protein hiv actually uh, produces um, rna to a protein and then the protein goes back to the uh, rna so that it forms a double um helix kind of like a double helix okay and then in fact you cells and then that's how hiv progresses all right so um as i mentioned possible in reversal especially in hiv and why is this discovery important is because this is how we do pcr okay covid 19 you heard about pcr if you have not learned about pcr this is how pcr works so you need to have um well not not really in terms of um going back but 
the discovery of this helps in the um, advances of technology in terms of PCR and all the other nucleotide or genetic based technologies. Okay, this session focuses on protein, so we'll, we'll talk about proteins first, and then um, after a few lectures, we'll move into um, lipids. So the big, <coughs> the building block of a protein is um, an amino acid. I'm sure everybody knows, as you are no longer first year, and it is coval covalently linked via an amide bond. So you have two amino acids, um, one with an uh, acid group, one is an uh, amino group. It forms an amide bond in the middle there. Okay. So some nomenclature for uh, proteins and peptides. So for one amino acid, it's just an amino acid. Once you have two conjugated together, forming a, um, an amide bond, we call it dipeptide. And if you have three amino acids, tripeptides. And then if you have more than that, normally you call it an oligopeptide okay? or polypeptides or proteins. So the nomenclature doesn't actually fit into one category only. Um, this is because depending on what type of proteins you're talking about, so say for example, a smaller organism might have um, a shorter proteins, but nonetheless, it is a protein and not a peptide or not a polypeptide. So a good example is uh, this one. Okay? Uh, Drosophila has what we call as a tail protein. So it is a protein. So um, if you go and read some literature, some of them defines a protein as a polypeptide having more than 50 amino acids, for example. But tau protein only has 11 amino acids. But it is still a protein because it functions as a protein. So the nomenclature normally goes around instead of uh, the chemistry, which is the structure, but it's, rather it goes around um, the function of that particular um, molecule. Okay, so this is just for peptide and protein. I'm not talking about everything else. All right. So the takeaway message is amino acid builds up peptides, and peptides can build up proteins. Okay, um, we're gonna look at next the anatomy of amino acids. Again, it might be some just some revision for you guys. So I'm just gonna go in very quick. If you do have any questions, um, you can just stop me anytime and ask, okay? So there are 20 naturally occurring amino acids. Um, why only 20? This is based on what IUPAC system defines. So in real life, there are more than, last time I count, counted is about 53 something different types of amino acids in the nature. It, this is excluding the ones that you can synthesize. If you can synthesize it on your own, pretty much it's unlimited. So as long as you synthesize whatever structure is there, um, say, for example, a glycine is like this, right? Oops. So if you change that one to methyl, it becomes an alanine. But what if you change um, the position of the amine? It is, still become, it is still an amino acid because by definition, amino acid is any molecule that has an amino group and an acid group. Okay, so if you change the position of that to the uh, to this position over here, what we then call is a beta alanine. It is still an alanine, but now it becomes a beta alanine. So there's a lot of variation, but only 20 naturally occurring, occurring amino acid that is being um, recognized by the IUPAC system. Okay, so uh, some other infos that might be uh, beneficial for you guys is that is the full name of the um, amino acid that is the chemical structure and these two are the abbreviation in terms of three letter code and um, single letter code as I mentioned here okay so three letter code and then a single letter code so in case if you are going to read some journal articles and then try to make sense because some journal articles they like to use three letter code some they use one so this is just to make sure that you guys know there are different ways to identify amino acid and um, some of them, or well, all four of them are pretty much here. Okay? You, you can still identify amino acid based on nucleotides, uh, nucleotide sequence, but I'm not going to touch about that one. Okay, so other unnaturally occurring amino acids are such as GABA. Okay, so GABA is um, an amino acid that is highly abundant in our brain. So um, 
that's our brain has a GABA receptor. And this one, again, um, I can't remember where is this mostly from, but um, they are nonetheless still a common amino acid. But some of them, uh, even though they are common, like GABA, GABA, um, uh, the GABA, GABA, um, the amino butyric acid is still abundance in our brain, but it is not part of our protein in our body. Okay, so our protein only consists of, well, at least for humans, uh, only consists of the 20 naturally occurring amino acids. But if you move to a different organism, they might have more than 20, especially if you in, uh, consider the L and D um, amino acids. So, um, for example, like bacteria, some bacteria, well, mm. I would say most bacteria, gram-positive bacteria, they also use D amino acid <coughs> as part of their cell wall uh, configuration or construction. Okay, so amino acid, how do you define them? Compound which contain an acid um, and a base. Um, so we call it as amino acid. So again, 20 naturally occurring amino acids and, um, and basic structure of amino acid is the one on the, your bottom right. Okay, so you have um, an acid group, um, an amine group, and of course you need to have an R group. Okay, so this R group determines the structure of the amino acid or the naming of the amino acids. So alpha carbon is a sterogenic center. So um, the 20 amino acids that I've mentioned are, are all L amino acids. Okay. So um, hopefully this one is just a, a rhetorical question. Hopefully you still remember what is the difference between L and D um, concept of sterogenic center. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at the activity of an amino acid. So on the amine side, you have a nucleophile or bronze state base. So bronze state base is basically um, any species that can accept proton. Okay, so in this case, because um, amine have one lone pair, so you can definitely accept proton, basic first year chemistry. Okay, and then um, on the other side, you have a bronze state acid. Uh, which is also a potential electrophile. And this is how, uh, because you have an electrophile and uh, you have um, nucleophile and electrophile, thus you can have a conjugation. Okay? Uh, basic, simple knowledge, even though it does not form simultaneously, spontaneously. So what this means is that the amino acid is very reactive at different pH. Um, very reactive here does not mean that it will spontaneously react. So what I mean very reactive here is that you can control the reactivity of the functional group of an amino acid at a certain pH. Okay. So say, for example, if you want to um, have a reaction occurring only at the um, carboxyl terminal, then you might want to choose a pH above, uh, I think in average, about 2.5. Okay. Why above 2.5? Because at above 2.5, you get your amine protonated. Therefore, a protonated amine are normally less reactive. Okay, because now it is no longer a bronze state base. Okay, and if you want to have a reaction only at the amine side, then vice versa, you might want to work um, at a pH which is very high so that you can get that one deprotonate. And once it becomes a carboxylate ion, it becomes less reactive. Okay. So again, basic chemistry. And this is how we combine all the knowledge that you guys have and work on a more applied side of uh, chemistry. Okay. At pH roughly 7, it's not ex ex exactly 7, but just in theory, at pH 7, it will form a zetoion, which is you have a 50% of the amine uh, charge and 50% of the um, carboxylic acid become carboxylate. Okay, so um, you have a net charge of zero. So why do I why do I say that at pH roughly about seven? Or of course, in the middle you have a weak acid, um, alpha carbon. You can still react it if you use a catalyst. Okay, um, I'll talk about that when we reach uh, to that particular slide. Okay, so our group um, basic 
naming is the side chain. You have 20 different side chain for uh, each amino acid. Okay, so this, there is different substituent per R group, um, contains primary amine and N-terminal except for proline. Okay, so proline, if you look at the structure, it's not here. So proline has a cyclic structure like that. Okay, so it's not a primary amine, now it becomes a secondary amine. But nonetheless, it is still reactive and you can still, using catalyst, you can actually react it and form a, a peptide bond. Okay, most amino acid contains I and E in the naming. Okay, uh, alanine, serine, cysteine, cytosine, um, but some does not like tryptophan. Okay, but otherwise, I think the, all the other 19s has um, I and E at the end. Oh no, for acids, they don't have um, I and E. Okay, each amino acid, as I mentioned here, so I'm just going to skip that one. Okay, so this is why um, I did not, I, I did say at around pH equals to 7. Okay, because each amino acid has its own PI. So PI is the isoelectric point uh, where you get the net charge of 0. Okay, so each amino acid has its own PI. You can see here 16, for example, 5. You move to histidine, you go and um, get 7.5. Arginine, you'll get about 10.7. Okay, so the changes, of course, it depends on the functional group that each amino acid has. And that includes the functional group that it has at the R um, side chain. Okay, so I'm just going to leave you guys with that um, just for your view. Okay. So um, amino acid can also be grouped differently. So if you go and read online, there are different ways by which you can characterize uh, or group amino acid together. You can see here, um, I grouped it based on the nature itself. So non-polar, if you go to the previous one, still non-polar, you have a polar, uh, polar uncharged and stuff like that. Okay? But if you go and read um, the literature, there are multiple ways by which people group them. So it can be heterocyclic, for example, there's only three amino acids. Um, you have phenylalanine, you have tyrosine, um, and what's the other one? Tryptophan. Okay. So you have a benzene, benzene containing, hydrocyl, and whatnot. So there, there are multiple ways by which you can group amino acid. Um, there's no right and wrong. As long as the chemistry is there, it is there. Okay. So what you need to recall for this section is pretty much the basic concept of acid and base chemistry that you guys have learned from your first year. Okay, please do not forget about that. Uh, pH, pKa, pKb, pI. So these are all my favorite questions when, when I'm asking uh, in quizzes or in final exam. Okay, so just recall what you have learned. Um, not, you know, learn it and then after exam you delete um, like you are deleting a memory from your laptop. Okay. All right, so how amino acids is uh, are made? Okay, so there are two pathways by which amino acid can be synthesized or created. So one is in uh, via the natural synthesis um, cycle. Second one is on the chemistry um, approach. Okay, so we're going to look at on the chemistry approaches, I think next week. Okay, but for now, we're just going to go through very quickly within five minutes. Okay. Um, so you can just read that one. So this statement refers to 20 uh, L amino acid. So again, if you don't recall, L and D is that, okay? Um, general concept is no longer a fact in general. So in humans, well, roughly it is still 20. What we produce is still 20. But if we consider the bacteria inside our intestine, that will be more than 20, okay? So just based on what we produce, what we can produce, it's normally around 20, okay? Um, not we can produce all 20. Well, the proteins that are in our body are made up of only 20 amino acids. That, will, that is more accurate. There are microbials using D, uh, for example, cell wall component, uh, basitracin antibiotic. So this is from fungus. It also uses um, D amino acids. So why does some of these organism um, utilizes a different isomer. Who want to have a guess? Because you guys look so bored 
I know I'm trying to just this will be our last slide lah. Who wants to have a guess? Why does some organism adapts a different isomer? What do you guys think? I don't have a name list, otherwise I will just call you guys. So, so those who are online, uh, Najib, are you here, Najib? <laughs> <laughs> Najib? Oh, Najib. Yes, doctor. Why do you think other bacteria, or, or in this case, bacteria um, adapts a D isomer in their cell wall synthesis? Um. Uh, datang online lah, datang online kena panggil Sebab orang kat sini saya tak tahu nama <laughs> Have a guess? Uh, Kenapa agaknya? I'm sorry, Dr. What was the question again? Why does, if you look at the slide um, So you can see here a bacteria uses a D amino acid So as I mentioned in humans normally, uh, well all of our proteins are made up of L isomer of the amino acids, but bacteria utilizes a D amino acid. Why do you think that is the case? Mm. Yeah, sure, it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. It's okay, because it's not in the lecture notes, so don't worry. Um, we have only two minutes. I I just try. Okay, please. <laughs> because um uh our body cannot uh uh um because the the isomer is harmful to our body if we consume something like that. So you say because our body cannot consume it, that's why the bacteria develops uh the isomer. Yeah. Okay, um, that's alright. Thank you, Najib. Saya nak tanya Akmal, tapi Akmal dah lari, so I cannot do anything. Um, Arif, what do you think? Uh, uh, because uh, says is uh, the the isomer is used in the cell wall component. Um, I think. Maybe it's because uh, the D isomer can form can form a stronger cell wall. Okay, that is partially correct. Stronger. Um, anyone wants to add in more? Why is it stronger if the bacteria uses D amino acid? Anyone? Anyone? Have a guess. Okay, but dah, masih dah time. Therefore, do you, do you guys want to have a homework and find the answer? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, so it is because um, in our body, we also digest proteins, right? And I, as I mentioned, our proteins are made up of L amino acid. So if you think, if the bacteria swaps the L amino acid to a D amino acid, will our body digest the protein in the same manner as the L? No. Okay, so it's kind of like a protection and that's why I say it's partially correct. So because once the cell wall is made up of a D amino acid, it becomes stronger uh, and more resistant to degradation. Okay, all right, that's all for today. Thank you. And I, um, hopefully you guys will still be here next week. Okay, otherwise I will call your name. <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you those who are online. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Also, I have shared um, all the lectures um, will be shared on Spectrum. So if you want to do a revision, you can just go and um, re-look, okay?